Welcome to Real Genius. I am Chris Wagner, movie critic of the Dallas Morning News. And I am Robert Wolonski, digital managing editor for the Dallas Morning News. And resident comic book fanatic. I thought you were going to call me a bad name. I would not Nerd, do that. Nerd, fanboy, geek, no. loser, loner. No. You like comic books. Well, I do. No shame in that. Uh, we're talking about comic book movies today because there's a new Sin City movie out. Sin City. A Dame to Kill For. Let's take a look at a quick scene. Looks like trouble. Uh, looks like Christmas. Well, you missed last call, boys. Move or die. So much violence in the world today. Robert. Well, especially in Frank Miller's world. And, and uh, Robert Rodriguez's world yes. as well. So I, I saw this, so you did not have to. Oh, I didn't to. have to, yeah, you thanks. Can, you can thank me later. I've seen Sin City, that was enough. This was uh, not quite as good as Sin City, and I didn't even really like Sin City all that much. I think these movies look really cool. I, I like the style, I like the kind of hyper noir. It looked like the comic uh, book. Light and Shadow Deal looks like Frank Miller's comic book work, absolutely. Um, they're just very sort of superficial, shallow, graphically violent because they can be. That's sort of how I feel about them. I didn't hate it, but there's pretty much no story there to speak of. But we want to talk about some of our favorite comic book movies. Well, let's first, uh, before we do that, let's talk real quick about Frank Miller because I do love Frank Miller. I love his early work going out. I love Daredevil. I love Ronan. I love a lot of his stuff. Uh, certainly Dark Knight is is. is one of the most pivotal works in the history of American comics, certainly in the 75th anniversary of Batman. If you have not read Dark Knight, uh, any of the, the, either of the Dark Knight books, please go do that. They're all great. And he reinvented Daredevil for all intents and purposes. Sure, right? he, re he, he, he took Daredevil, who was a, a, a minor character, made him certainly gritty, made him um, sort of a precursor to what Batman would become in The Dark Knight Returns. I love all that stuff. I just, for some reason, and I think I think I had it, my falling out with Frank Miller on the Spirit adaptation. Again, one of the most important comic books in American history, comic strips initially, um, Will Eisner. But then he took his movie and basically made you know, a Sin City one and a half out of it. I think that's kind of the problem. I, I feel like these are beautiful to look at, but there's some weird hollowness. And the same way that there was in the Watchmen adaptation, they are so faithful that there's kind of no soul to them. They just use the comic books as storyboards. And the fact that you have really good actors who are still sort of wedded to this, the format, I don't think they found a very good marriage in the first one or in, in the spirit. And I think it looks from the sound of the second one that the same problems sort of occur again. I also think some of the dialogue that works on the page right. doesn't really work that well in a movie. It reminds me of the Harrison Ford's famous line to George Lucas, George, you can write this stuff, but I don't think you can really say it. Right. And I think that's the problem with, the, with a lot of this stuff. That's why I say it's a storyboard. There, there, there needs to be some give and take between the media, and I, I think the refusal to be able to do that, or the inability to do that, I think is where the problem for me came up with Sin City. So, but we were talking about the fact that this is obviously the 83rd comic book adaptation this year. Uh, certainly there are 512 more to come next year and 1,015 after that. And we've talked about superhero movies recently, but we're, we're not doing that today. Right. In fact, I, I felt kind of bad. I, we sat down to talk about the fact we're going to do comic book movies, but not do superhero movies. And the one I picked was a superhero movie that's not based on a comic book, although it would have been the greatest comic book adaptation ever. It's a good choice, though. The reason I picked it was because of Bruce Willis, who's in the Sin City movies. Certainly I was thinking about Bruce Willis a lot the last couple of days as you were talking about Sin City. But I wanted to talk about Unbreakable, which I think is the greatest superhero movie ever made. Um, not based on a comic book, but it is very much wedded to the art. It, it's set in the world of comic books and comic book art, because the character that Sam Jackson plays is, very, is a comic book art collector. He is a comic book collector. In fact, the, the, the pivotal scene at the end of the film takes place amongst a row of comic books. So it reminds you again and again and again that the fact that this guy the Bruce Willis character is, in fact, Superman without it necessarily being the Superman origin retold. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. I don't know about you, but it is my favorite M. Night Shyamalan film by a million miles. It's certainly the last good M. Night Shyamalan <laughs> It's only the third one. 
by that point in his career, right. Sixth Sense being his second, the first one being that weird Rosie O'Donnell movie that nobody remembers. I don't even know what you're talking about. That's right, see? <laughs> Sixth Sense was not his first movie. But it's, it's easily, in fact, I think Tarantino had it on his, one of his best ever lists and talks about how it, they sold it wrong. They sold it as a thriller. They sold it as a, another M. Night Shyamalan movie with a twist after Sixth Sense. If they had just told it, sold it as the greatest Superman story ever told, I think people would have come to realize how great a film this was as a comic book movie that did not need to be a comic book film. Shall we watch the trailer? Let's watch the trailer because it's interesting. If you haven't seen the trailer in a long time, it's interesting to see how they sold it as some weird thriller, and it wasn't that at all. So here's the trailer for Unbreakable. Hi. You're in the emergency room in the Philadelphia City Hospital. I'm gonna ask you some questions. Where were you sitting on the train? Against the window. In the passenger car? Yes. You're certain you were in the passenger car? Yeah. Where are the other passengers? Your train derailed. Took a curve too fast. A second train collided with yours after it derailed. Debris spread over one mile. Why are you looking at me like that? There are two reasons why I'm looking at you like this. One, because it seems you aren't the only survivor of this train wreck. And two, you don't have a scratch on you. I know what's going through your mind right now. You're searching for meaning in all of this. No one thing. 131 people died so you could finally understand the destiny for which you were born. Are you ready for the truth? I love it because it's the it's basically uh, Tarantino really said it's the, it's if Superman wasn't from Krypton but he was from Earth it would have been this movie. You mentioned that the Samuel Jackson character is a comic collector. He has a gallery. He's very much a, a comics esthete, yes. if you will, and he's obsessed with the idea of heroism and villainy. And, and the fine line. And the fine line, and that's sort of what gives this movie its oomph. I haven't seen it in years. This actually makes me want to go watch it again. I remember how much you loved it when it, when it came oh, out. That's right. When we saw then. it, I was, I, was, I was convinced that I had seen the greatest movie ever made when we walked out of that screening many years ago. I remember that very well. I was over the moon with how much I loved Unbreakable. It, it is an extraordinary piece of work. So my choice is actually in some ways has some things in common with Unbreakable. It's about sort of the culture of the outsider that we see a lot in the world of comic books. Uh, this is Ghost World, uh, Terry Zwigoff's Ghost World. It occurred to me that I could have also chosen Terry Zwigoff's Crumb, as right. a sort of out of left field comic book movie, but I chose Ghost World from uh, 2001, a very young Scarlett Johansson pre-stardom, and uh, Thora Birch is the star. This is based on Daniel Clowes's comic book. Mm -hmm. um, he's done many fine comics. One and of my favorites. Graphic novels, a uh, fantastic writer as well um, as, as an artist. He's got the whole package, and he kind of represents this thing we've seen in recent years of comic books being taken seriously as literature. Um, which I have mixed feelings about. I am, I am not the aficionado that you are. Um, you probably know Klaus's work better than I do, but this is one of my favorite movies of the decade, actually. This came out in 2001. Um, I really liked the way that it captures, again, the sense of the outsiders looking in and the way that it frames people that we may think of as freaks in society and, you know, sort of in a very, almost like a freeze frame um, comic panel sort of way. Right. And it tells a very sweet story at the same time. It ends up being a relationship between, not an entirely appropriate relationship between Thor Birch and uh, Steve Buscemi right. uh, in the film. But I think it's a very, it's a very touching movie. Um, it's one of my favorite Zweigoffs. And uh, I think it really kind of captures what Klaus does um, for the screen. Let's take a look at a scene 
from Ghost World. I'm gonna let you handle the 430 crowd by yourself. And that way you can evaluate your performance while it's slow. And then we'll ease you into the bigger crowds, all right? You can count on me, sir. Cool. Do you serve beer? Any alcohol? I wish. Actually, you wish. After about five minutes of this movie, you're gonna wish you had ten beers. What are you doing? You don't ever criticize the feature. Why? What's the difference? I mean, we already got his money. <laughs> Look, that's the policy, okay? If you want to make up your own rules, open up your own theater. Yeah, let me have lots of butter on it. There you go, smothered in delicious yellow chemical sludge. I think Zweigap knows how to let a comic book movie breathe and live on its own as a movie without mm -hmm. being completely chained to the source material. And I think that's one of the things that we don't like so much about the Sin City movies. Right, I, you know, it's funny. We, I, I, I screwed up. I know I shouldn't have picked Unbreakable for this. Should have saved that for the superhero. What I should have done was picked A History of Violence or Road to Perdition. Road to Perdition's fantastic. Which are two other comic books that are that are movies based on comic books that aren't superhero movies. I mean, obviously, the super, the comic book doesn't necessarily always have to be superheroes. In fact, at their best, like Beaches, for instance, they are not. Uh, this is this is not what they are. Um, Persepolis, really good one. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a million of them that uh, that could have been better than um, than the movies that that come out. So I, I screwed up a little bit, but I any chance to remind people of how great I'm. I think Unbreakable is really, but it makes me want to watch Ghost World again. Actually, because it is it takes place in this comic world, world of, right. of comic obsession. But Road to Perdition, I think, is also fantastic. Uh, but I, look, Zweigoff, man, he's one of my favorites. Bad Santa. Yep. That's a, that is. I always maintain that Bad Santa is the greatest underground comic book that Robert Crumb never wrote. I mean, what is Billy Bob Thornton in that film if not an R. Crumb character come to life? It's pretty fantastic. So I think that these guys all My favorite Christmas movie. I should say. Oh my God, it's one of the greatest movies ever made. Batter Santa is even better. Um, there are things that, just lines from it, that when they come to your head, you just are reminded of how great they are. So yeah, I think these are all better options than, see, I like what we should, we should do this every week. Movies that are better than the movie that we that's opening this week that we don't really want to talk about. That would be a good title for our show. Uh, we should change that. There's something coming out this week, but we have better options for you. Yes, so those options are Unbreakable and Ghost World. And uh, History of Violence. History of Violence. Road to Perdition. Road to Perdition, Persepolis, Bad Santa. Yeah. Go rent them all <laughs> right now and uh, come back and watch us next week.